Uh, okay, so the Wednesday night ratings, like you said, NXT won the overall viewers and uh, really increased their rating from the week before. What what was uh, inside of those numbers that stood out to you? There's a lot. Um, I mean, NXT increased everywhere, huge. Um, you know, real big increase with teenagers. I just think, you know, the the obviously more than anything, I think it's the name Halloween Havoc. I don't think it was like the the matches themselves because they built up big matches before and they usually do do well when they build up big matches, um, you know, but um, not not to that degree. Um, I mean, they, you know, just like, yeah, I mean, look, NXT, not by much, I think it was 4,000 viewers, but they did beat SmackDown in 18 to 49s and almost did the same rating. Um, what was it? 5,000 viewer difference. I mean, essentially the same. It was basically essentially the same. It's basically, you know, realistically, it was the same audience as SmackDown, although um, SmackDown did better with men. NXT, I think, although NXT was strong with men too. Um, but, you know, so it it was a real impressive number. I think that the, I I think that what, what seemed to me that, that the name brought people in and the entrances and the uniqueness of it. Because I remember watching the show and, you know, I know with AEW on those Wednesdays, when you're in a setting that doesn't look like a wrestling ring, it usually, like, and you're fighting. I mean, not long uh, segments out of the ring where there's no fighting. Those do not those do not usually do well. But the segments out of the ring, you know, where you're fighting backstage, like when the Young Bucks fought Butcher and Blade was like the prime example. Um People just, when they're flipping around or whatever, they get compelled to that because it's not usual pro wrestling. And they had a lot of that. Like, you can't do it every week, but they had a lot of that. Like, I noticed with the, um, although the, um, um, what's the, the, um, Raquel Gonzalez and Rhea Ripley match, which was all in the ring. They didn't run around backstage. They did really well. Um, The main event was a TLC in the main event for the championship. And that did really well also. Um, the uh, Gargano match, which did have that weirdness, you know, I mean, the backstage stuff, which when I was watching, I'm going like, this is probably going to do pretty well. I think the cool entrances were a big part, which, you know, you can do cool entrances. Um, AEW is doing it with Omega and to a, de- to a degree with Cody. And quite frankly, you know, I mean, if it was up to me, I would I would make that the norm and, and try to do... You know, really in Jericho too. You know, because of the song, um, I would. You know, I think that the coolness of ring entrances is definitely a big plus when it comes to making stars and and drawn viewers. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that brought it in. It's, it's cool ring entrances are big are, are a big deal. Um, you know, well, you know, what does this mean? Because I mean, they were not doing anything for weeks, and then one week, all of a sudden, that number just exploded. You know, I mean. Um, and yet, in in every key demo, they still lost, um, and and by a significant margin. I think there was um, males eighteen to thirty four was actually pretty close. But every and 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 NXT actually went big with male teens. AEW was hurt with male teens, and and that's actually like if you know I see all these people like talking about oh you know like that Jericho segment the week before. It's like Jericho and and um, MJF were the winners they had the highest uh you know number of anyone you know 18 to 49 which is the key number they were number one of the whole night and they were number one of anything not on raw of the whole week so whatever they did the week before did not tune people out for this week whatsoever if if anything i don't want to say it was the opposite but it was not a hindrance it was the worst you could say is it was it didn't matter, and it pro- the reality is it probably was a positive, um, you know. But um, you know, so that but but with male teens, that that was there. There is an AEW. There is a legitimate AEW issue with male teens. They should be stronger than they are. That is the one thing. I mean, as far as once you get to eighteen to forty nine, um, you know they they've had bad weeks with women, but. The not the last couple of weeks, the women came back, you know, which I think had more to do with um, the moving of the time slots and things like that. Um, the one week, I think one week when they were against 
Uh, was it a baseball playoff or something? Like their viewers per home went back to old numbers for one week. But then last week it bounced back to um, pretty strong numbers. So there's, I mean, there's there's little things here and there, but um, um, for you know, I, I mean, there's you can you can always you can always improve. Um, but and you know, it's like I'm really curious to see if next week how many of those people NXT re- retains because they did have a good show. Like if they had like all these viewers watching for the gimmick and then you lay an egg on the show, it's like okay, you know you these people saw something and they're probably going to go back to the old thing and be bored but they really gave those people a good show so it's going to be very interesting it's going to be real interesting next week because when i look at the lineups that have been announced for both shows next next week they're not strong they're not like this week this week freaking both companies had great lineups and both companies had for the most part great shows so you know next week aw is is you know their whole show is just to build the pay-per-view um nxt is whatever i you know they what they've announced so far ember moon and dakota kai so what and um you know what i mean it's nothing nothing to write home about nothing that's gonna you know i i i don't know like that's gonna be interesting to see the the how many people how many new viewers they made by putting on that great show in front of a lot of viewers the thing to me was they promoted that show like it was special like they were even promoting stuff from that show instead of the next week of television because they promoted it out at least two or three weeks. So I thought that was good. And, um, you know, the, it, like you said, it delivered. So hopefully some of those people uh, do stick around. I, you, I mean, but you can't, you're not going to be able to, you know, build to a Halloween Havoc every week. So they have to no. sort of go back to, you know, they, they have to still have strong shows without the the gimmick stuff that probably drew a lot of older viewers just by the name. Yeah, well, I, you know, it wasn't so much. Well, I mean, they did draw a lot of older viewers, absolutely, but but they drew again. They had great gains in in in, in eighteen to forty nine, and great gains with teenagers. I mean, the teenage numbers for NXT were, um, you know, it it blew away SmackDown and blew away AEW. Um, well, I just watched uh, Halloween Havoc nineteen ninety two, and this two thousand and twenty version was only about two thousand times better than that show. Yeah, it was it, it, it was a good show. But the other thing is, is that you can't. I mean, you can't do all the brawling outside the ring and haunted house and that stuff. You you can't do that week after week because if you did that week after week, you'll essentially it become worthless. But. Um, and you can't do a TLC match every week, but but again, one of the high points was that uh, Rhea Ripley recall Gonzalez match. And granted, that was built up over many many weeks, um, maybe even months if you really look back on it. Um, and it was the first match and they put it on TV, not on on pay per view or you know Takeover or whatever. Um, so there was there was that, but I mean when the the other when that was over, when that match was over, it was like man, these two, I I felt. These two are so marketable. I, I just thought, you know, it's like Raquel Gonzalez. She's she's six feet tall. She's looks athletic. She moves athletic. She's really good. Ripley's even better. Um, Rip. I mean, Ripley should should have been a star in the main roster from a year back. Um, Gonzalez. I mean, I would keep her in a, NXT for probably another while. But I would look and go like she's got so much potential. And then immediately after I think that, I go, well, look at every single person in NXT and look what happened, you know, um, when they went to the main roster. And then I got a lot less excited about it. (laughs) Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.